if you have seen my previous video where i covered example number three this should be relatively easier for you to understand okay this is slightly difficult right as you have three sections over here to deal with but again don't worry we can easily apply the conjugate beam method and calculate the slopes and deflection interesting thing is uh, most of the problems that we did so far were related to beams of uniform cross sections here it is different the cross sections at these three locations are different all the area moment of inertia are not equal to each other they are however related it is i in this portion bc it is 3i and this portion cd it is 2i i'll try to ensure that i finish this problem in the next 10 to 15 minutes and this is going to be fun and first of all please note young's modulus is given kilo newton per mm square and area moment of inertia is also given what we need to work out is the value of slope and deflection at all of these three important points how do we approach sir the approach is very simple just like in the previous problem we are going to assume initially that the beam is having a uniform cross section spot the difference uniform uniform non-uniform uniform cross section okay uh, we are going to make the change incorporate that uh, incorporate the non-uniformness also or varying uniform varying cross section also don't worry plus plus minus minus write them down simplify the equation this is what you have now let's take the moment about a 150 multiplied by 10 300 multiplied by 20 these two forces are going to give clockwise moment at a let us do that whereas this rd multiplied by 30 will give anti-clockwise moment at a so plus 30 times of rd calculate rd put it over here get ra these are the values so so damn simple okay sir let's update ra and rd as 200 and 250 and don't worry this this calculation of bending moment is also very easy let me just show this to you this actually is the m over ei diagram you have the m diagram divide all the values by ei you get the m over ei diagram that is the only difference why do we do this i'll get to that and some of you already know most of you already know bending moment at b so this force of 200 newton will bend the beam in this fashion it is a case of sagging bending moment so 200 multiplied by 10 will give you 2000 just look at the numerator similarly bending moment at c this force of 250 multiplied by this distance 10 will give the value as 200 uh, 2500 okay when you've got these two points divided by ei this is the m over ei diagram now we are going to transform this beam from a real beam to a conjugate beam by by making this m over ei as the load okay did you get this now the m over ei diagram becomes of the real beam becomes the loading for the conjugate beam and that is the idea now every all the calculations have to be repeated again you need to find the reactions you need to find the shear forces at uh, all of these four locations you need to find the bending moment at all of these four locations when you do that you indirectly are calculating slopes and deflection for the real beam please note slope and deflection for the real beam real beam that means shear force and bending moment for the conjugate beam okay so we are going to move from here to here everything will happen gradually don't worry this is going to be a very step by step approach but see again here what have i considered i is constant but is i really constant no here it is i here it is 3i here it is 2i so this change has to be incorporated can you observe the change see again see again let me explain okay first of all take a look this is what we've drawn so far and this is where we need to reach we need to build the m over ei for this different cross section uh, beam okay uh, how do we get to this get to this place from over here so uh, take a look observe is there any difference no sir here there is no difference because 
the beam cross section is same the beam cross section is same now let me ask again spot the difference yes sir there is a difference here the cross section is like this and here the cross section is a bit bigger isn't it here the moment of inertia is simply i and here it is 3i so uh, we start from 2000 over ei and here it is 3i so 2000 over e and this i will become three times 3i can you see the change this value also will become 2500 divided by e into 3i so it becomes 2500 over 3i i hope that you are now able to spot the differences it's the same cases over here also just a sec grid cd it is absolutely half it is this is i this is going to be 2i absolutely half of this 2500 divided by 2 year and that's the end of it now let us get back so what i've done is i've divided the geometry into four shapes three of them are triangles uh whereas one is a rectangle hmm? since these are triangularly varying loads students please remember all the bending moment values are positive so all the loads will be pointing in the upward direction this way okay and hence the reactions on the conjugate beam will be in the downward direction okay now let me split them up explode it and let us analyze all the areas please note the areas that these geometries contain will be the corresponding value of point loads that means if i were to replace uh, this triangularly varying load this triangularly varying load with a single point load that can be done by calculating their areas so half of half of sir base that is 10 into height that is this much all the triangles can be dealt easily rectangle is base into height simple very simple okay all of these values have been calculated do pause the video let me get away from it do pause the video and watch it i want all of you to watch it okay and notice notice that this over here this point and this point they are at the same level so the value of m over ei over here is 2000 over 3 ei take a look at this point this very point this very point this has a value of 2500 over 3 ei when you take the difference of these two values this is what you get 500 over 3 ei i want all of you to have a very careful look at this okay no confusion should creep inside your head so these are the values and you know very well that all of these point loads here it is going to be right at the center i can even show it to you right at the center this value 20000 over 3 ei right at the center 20000 over 3 ei at the center that means at a distance of 5 from b however all of these triangularly varying loads will have the corresponding or equivalent point loads at a distance of l by 3 from the right angle that means from this location from this location to the right from this location to the left and from <laughs> this location to the left observe the changes l by 3 from the right angle l by 3 from the right angle over to this side l by 3 from the right angle over to this side okay i hope i uh, rather believe that you have understood this concept right so with that being said now let us enjoy and benefit from all the hard work that we've done so far minus minus plus 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 write them down and enjoy simplify wonderful now let's take the moment uh the first thing is this rd multiplied by this 30 will have a clockwise impact at a therefore a negative sign done whereas the remaining one two three forces for the conjugate beam will sort of have an anti-clockwise impact and that's why you can see a positive sign over here so uh, it goes like this 
10,000 over EI multiplied by this distance, that is going to be, hmm? you can do the math yourself, 10 minus 10 by 3, hmm? here it is, 10 minus 10 by 3 by the way is 20, similarly, 20,000 over 3 EI multiplied by this, this is going to be 15, similarly, 2,500 over 3 EI multiplied by this much, this is going to be 20 minus 10 by 3, 23 is 60, 60 minus 10 is 50 by 3, so let me just write this, and you can now clearly see this is going to be, for this force of 6250, this is going to be 10 plus 10, 20, plus 10 by 3, 60 plus 10, 70 by 3, here it is, done, solve for RD, if you have RD put it over here, you can get RA, these are the values, quickly make an update, now we know, whatever calculations of shear forces we do for the conjugate beam qualify as slope for the real beam, let's do it, we have been instructed to find the shear forces at, shear forces at all of these four locations, uh, slopes at all of these four locations, so if you find the shear forces, you get the slopes for the real beam, it's very simple, let's say we are at A, I know the value of shear force at A is going to be this much only with a negative sign. However, if you wish to calculate, um, you can follow the sign convention at A. Take a look at this RHS portion. Right side of cut section, downward is positive, down is positive. This is positive. Up is negative, 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 negative. So write them down and enjoy the stuff. We'll simplify it later on. Don't worry. Similarly, at B. You can take this portion to the left of B. You have to tackle only two forces. So when you tackle the left hand side portion, upward is positive, positive downward is negative, write it down. Simplification later on. Okay. Now consider this portion C. Let's consider the RHS portion. RHS. So downward is positive. Okay, sir. This is positive. Upward is negative. Write it down so so damn simple and finally you have this uh, d i know the value of magnitude is going to be this much however if you wish to calculate i mean since it is the left hand side of the portion upward is positive plus 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 downward is negative write all of them down simplification later on don't worry bending moment calculation well it's easy take a look again hogging sagging concept uh, at A, this is pretty obvious, it is going to be equal to 0, you don't have to worry. At B, the bending moment can be calculated by considering this LHS portion. So this produces a hogging bending moment, whereas this force produces a sagging. So this uh, 347 stuff is going to have a, a negative bending moment, whereas this 10,000 over EI will have a positive bending moment. I'm sure you can calculate it, force into perpendicular distances with respect to point B. Similarly, for C, this force 6250 over EI will have a sagging bending moment. Hmm? And this force over here will have a hogging bending moment. So just write it down. Write it down. And when you simplify all of this, these are the values which you get. But again, there is a problem. Sir, how much is this EI going to be? So uh, in the problem description, we have been given the value of E and I, that's E and that's I, do the math, this is what you get, but again you can see this is in millimeter square and so far that units that we have considered is in kilonewton and meter, I think it would be appropriate to convert this also into meters, so very easy, meter, this is millimeter, milli is 10 raised to minus 3, do the math and enjoy, done, so far so good, now let me just plug in the value of EI at all of these locations and when you do that this is what you get these are the values in radians um, if you wish to convert this into degrees let's say then you have to multiply by 180 over 5 this is going to give you the corresponding value in degrees okay that is the entire calculation I think we are done almost as I said, 10 to 15 minutes, these are the values which you get. And now let me just make a 
quick diagram and show you uh, these two are negative slopes at A and B. From this data, uh, this is how these two are negative slopes. So, so at A negative slope, at B negative slope. But at C, this is positive, isn't it? At D also, it is positive. You will see, you will see the point, the tangent lifting. And that is the difference. Now, whenever you compute the answer, try to understand what the information the answer is trying to convey. Okay, that's very important. Uh, yeah. Let's, let's, let me just quickly write down the values. This is theta A hmm, with respect to the positive x-axis. This is again, this is going to be theta B. Um, this right here is going to be theta C. And this over here is going to be theta D. As far as deflections are concerned, this is YB. And this over here is YC. Done and dusted. Right? So if you find value in this content, do share this video with all of your friends and classmates so they can, they can also benefit. And yes, that is all from my side for today. This is Manas Patnaik signing off. Take care and have a nice day.